Hi and welcome to section 5 in which we're going to look at the design and deployment considerations for AWS Lambda. Now in this section we're going to cover a lot of topics so let's have a look at them. First we're going to look at versioning in AWS Lambda. After that we're going to see how you can use environments in a Lambda function. So how do you actually work with variables? We're going to look at how do you view Lambda metrics. It's always important from an operational aspect to see how your Lambda functions are behaving. And so in that video we're going to look at how do we work with Lambda metrics. We're going to look at viewing CloudWatch logs. We'll have a quick review on CloudFormation. Now CloudFormation can be used to create Lambda functions on the fly. So before we actually look at how to use CloudFormation with AWS Lambda, we'll first have a quick review on CloudFormation. And then we'll see how to deploy Lambda functions using CloudFormation. We'll look at automated deployment of Lambda functions or applications. We'll look at some troubleshooting aspects of Lambda functions. And finally, we'll look at some of the best practices. So let's move on to the first video in this section, which is versioning in AWS Lambda. So in this video, we'll look at versioning, what are aliases in AWS Lambda, and finally, we'll look at a demo on both versioning and aliases. So versioning in AWS Lambda. So just like any other programming languages, developers use multiple versions of modules or their code. You could have versions which could be in the development phase, versions in the production phase. So the same thing in AWS Lambda. So AWS also has that functionality of versioning your Lambda functions. This allows for better management of your code. So just like in any other programming language, you can have code which is meant for development. So a particular version for that and then a particular version for production for AWS Lambda functions. Now one key thing to note is that when you actually publish a particular version of a Lambda function, that function code cannot be changed. And when you actually go to demo, you're going to actually see this in action. The latest version of the function is tagged as dollar latest. Keep this in mind. Now based on the last two points, so we mentioned that once a version has been published, it cannot be changed. So then you would have multiple versions of your function. But let's say you wanted your application to just keep on pointing to a particular version of the function. What you can do is you can actually create an alias. So alias can be used to point to a particular version of an AWS Lambda function. So this is just to iterate the last point wherein actually you can actually have an alias to point to a function version. So now let's look at versioning on an aspect in the slide. So let's say you have an orders function. This is currently version one. So you can actually deploy this to your production area. Next, you could have the same function orders, but version two, and you can actually deploy that to your development area. Now to understand what is an alias in AWS Lambda, let's say you have an application. The application is now pointing to and orders function, this is version one in AWS Lambda. Let's say now you have another version of your function orders two. You now make your application point to orders version two and not to order version one. Now what's the problem with this scenario is that you would probably have to recompile your application and then redeploy your application. So every time if you have a version change in an AWS Lambda function, it doesn't make sense to every time recompile and deploy your application. That is where you can actually use an alias. So now you can have your application point to something known as an alias in AWS Lambda. That alias can then point to whatever version of the Lambda function you want. So at one point in time, it could point to orders version one. At another point in time, it could point to orders version two. This is the benefit of using aliases in AWS Lambda. So now let's go on to the AWS console, see how can we can work with versions and how we can work with aliases. So here we are back in our AWS console. We are in the Singapore region. Let's go ahead and create a new function. We're going to author this from scratch. We'll give the function a name and let's choose a new role. And then let's go ahead and create our function. Now, once the function has been created, let's go to our code. Now the interface for AWS Lambda has just changed over this week. And that's because AWS does make frequent changes to their interface. But apart from that, the functionality remains the same. So we're going to implement the same functionality we've been doing in the previous videos. So now we're going to show how to versioning in AWS Lambda. For this, we are going to make a very simple change to our code. So we'll just write to the console. This is version one, right? So we're keeping it as simple as possible. Let's go ahead and save our code. If you want, you can go ahead and test the code. We already have a demo event which is configured. Let's go ahead and test our code. 
if you go on top you can see that the execution has succeeded and you get the output as this is version one so that's done now what you can do is that you can actually go on to actions and you can say publish a new version so now when you publish this version you give the version description and you can see that you have the tag of dollar latest for this particular function so let's go ahead and give a version description and then let's go ahead and publish this version of code right so once this is done this is version one and the key thing to note which we mentioned in the slides once you publish a version you cannot change the inline code for that function this is important now if you go on top you can actually go on to version so here you can see the versions you can also see aliases now before we actually move on to aliases let's again go back to versions let's click on dollar latest now once you go on to dollar latest your function is being loaded so once you go on to dollar latest you can now see that you get the next version of your function and this is the one which you can edit so now you can actually put in console.locked this is version 2 you can save it and you can test it and if you go on top you can get this is version 2 so this is the output so now you have two versions of your function first is dollar latest and the next is version 1 and you can go to any version of the function which you want so this is with regards to the versions now let's go to aliases so now in alias you can actually go ahead and create an alias which can point to a particular version of the function for this we again need to go on to actions and go ahead and create an alias we need to give a name so let's say we are creating an alias for a production application so let's name it production and then we can decide which version it should point to so let's say we want it to point to version 1 because this is the one that should actually be in production let's choose this and let's click on create right so now your alias is pointing to the production version if you want you can go ahead and test the alias and then you can see you're getting the output of this is version 1 and that's because this function alias is point to version 1 of your function so here you've seen how you can actually work with versioning in aws lambda and aliases